reading from the book of Numbers. Raising his eyes, Balaam saw Israel encamped by tribes. The Spirit of God came on him and he declaimed his poem. He said, the oracle of Balaam, son of Boa, the oracle of the man with far-seeing eyes, the oracle of the one who hears the word of God. He sees what Shaddai makes him see, receives the divine answer, and his eyes are opened. How fair are your tents, O Jacob! How fair are your dwellings, Israel! Like valleys that stretch afar, like gardens on the banks of a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. A hero arises from their stock. He reigns over countless peoples. His king is greater than Agag. His majesty is exalted. Then Balaam declared his poem again. He said, The oracle of Balaam, son of Boa, the oracle of the man with far-seeing eyes, the oracle of the one who hears the word of God, of the one who knows the knowledge of the Most High. He sees what Shaddai makes him see, receives the divine answer, and his eyes are opened. I see him, but not in the present. I behold him, but not close at hand. A star from Jacob takes up the leadership. A scepter rises from Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, Make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Saviour. Lord, make me know your ways. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord will come, go out to meet him. Great is his beginning and his reign will have no end. Alleluia. the Lord be in your heart and your lips, that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus had gone into the temple and was teaching when the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him and said, What authority do you have for acting like this? And who gave you this authority? And I, replied Jesus, will ask you a question, only one. If you tell me the answer to it, I will then tell you my authority for acting like this. At John's baptism, where did it come from, heaven or man? And they argued it out among themselves. If we say from heaven, he will retort, then why did you refuse to believe him? But if we say from man, we have the people to fear, for they all behold that John was a prophet. So their reply to Jesus was, we do not know. And he retorted, nor will I tell you my authority for acting like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today's first reading appears to be messianic, and indeed, that was how in the early centuries of both Judaism and the early church took it. You could easily look at this 
and think that it was a prophecy for Christ's coming. It is not. But it does have an Advent message for us. If you do nothing else today, read the part of the book of Numbers about Balaam and Balak. Apart from anything else, that has an amusing story about a donkey. There's no doubt that Balaam really lived. The story in Numbers is almost exactly replicated in the Antiquities of the Jews by Josephus. And in 1967, the excavations at Deir Allah in Jordan unearthed a very long subscription about him in Aramaic. And having spent three years in Jordan myself, I can confirm that all the places listed do exist. Upon realizing that the Hebrews were arriving in Moab following their departure from Egypt, King Balak sent for Balaam, a holy man living 400 miles away, to come and curse them prior to military action. Balaam refused on the grounds that God had spoken to him. A second embassy was sent out, and God told him, and it persuaded him, to set out. And God told him to conform exactly to his directions. Elaborate preparations were made. Seven altars were set up with a ram and a bull to be sacrificed at each. And Balaam astounded Balak by publicly recognizing the future success and expansion of Israel. A second effort was made, this time with Balak uh, demonstrating the full extent of the tribes of Israel. Again, Balaam recognized the future success of Israel. A third effort was made, and this time Balaam walked away from the sacrifices, looked to the wilderness, and said the words we have heard today. Balak rebuked him, ordered him to leave unpaid, whereupon Balaam re recited the second half of the first reading we've heard. Balaam had nothing to do with Israel but he did recognize the overpowering influence of Israel's God and that there was absolutely nothing that, that could stop either the temporal success of the Israelites nor the ultimate success of their God. The key point is not that he was converted. He wasn't. And indeed, in the Josephus version, he goes on to suggest how Balak might test the dedication of the Israelites to their God by introducing loose women to the, their young men but that he recognized the inevitability of the achievement of God's will. And this is the message for us here today. Here we are. We may be like St. John of the Cross, struggling to ascend through mental exercises to unity with God. Or we may be like my own mentor, the medieval German theologian Meister Eckhart, seeking to empty ourselves to let God possess our soul. Or we may be, like the vast majority of the people in this country, praying that God will make the COVID-19 vaccination effective. What we need to recognize, and with more difficulty accept, that like Balaam, even with our eyes closed, God, the God of the Israelites advancing northwards through Moab, the God of the New Testament, our God, has a divine purpose from which he's not going to be deflected. Like Balaam and Moses, I've had the privilege of standing on the top of Pisgah and looking across the river Jordan into the Promised Land. Moses did not get to the Promised Land, and Balaam returned to his own country. But we know that God's Promised Land is out there. It was given to Balaam, not an Israelite, not a prophet, to recognize the unremitting advance of God's people. And we, we here today, scared of coronavirus, worrying about the impact of Brexit, restricted in our very opportunities to worship, should recognize that if Balaam could see the inevitable advance of God's people, then so should we. Yesterday was Gaudete Sunday. We should rejoice at the imminent coming of our Lord.